Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here. Today I'm going to share with you a nice update about the box camera, the new box one. And that's the official name, that's the launch product name. Of course, we've been talking about this camera as the ham cam for quite some time, or the HB1. That's because that's what's on the front. That was a kind of code name and development while we were sending it out there. But the official name is New Box One, and that's quite simply because uh, it is what it is. Original inspiration with modern innovation. We've taken the box camera and modernized it. Let's talk about that for a second. Over the past couple of months, really more like six weeks, five weeks, I've been spending a lot of time redesigning the shutter mechanism, and that has taken me quite a bit of time to get just right. And I'm still perfecting it, but here's some good news. The shutter mechanism is what was required in order for me to be able to produce images for you to see. Hi, and if you're looking over here and maybe it's not too blown out in the camera, you'll notice there's an image on my surface right there. That's because at the end of this, I'm gonna share the images that I've taken so far with this. These are uh, pre-release images, but they're excellent images. I'm really excited. Now, you guys will know something very important about a, a camera is the ground glass test. And using a single element meniscus lens means that uh, we're able to do something real special to tell if we've got our focus pretty good. We go ahead and we place the box in the camera like this. We take a piece of ground glass we put right there. We put a quaff or a loop over our head like this and then we look to see if we get an image, albeit reversed upside down, in the rear view. And we do, we get a great image. So early on, using this 95 millimeter focal length lens, I was able to get really great sharp images as, as early as six, seven months ago once I began finalizing the cartridge design. And that's very exciting because it's the cartridge which is going to hold the film firmly in place, kind of like acting as a pressure plate with the tension that's going to allow the film to be able to be focused properly, the image to be able to be focused on the film properly. Good thing to know, we got that right out of the box. So initially on, when we passed the original ground glass test in so many different environments, I realized that I was ready to begin maneuvering the, uh, the <laughs> maneuvering, researching and really making the shutter. I knew the shutter was gonna be the toughest part just because it's a rotary shutter. It may seem simple, but I'm gonna tell you here, guys, I went through over 100 iterations of the rotary shutter in order to get one that worked the way that I want. And this is actually, uh, not a complete success because I'm still uh, developing it right now, but it is much, much closer to being done. That's why I'm able to actually present to you images. Let's talk a little bit more. Um, the other thing about the camera is that this is a box camera and it uses an aperture stick. Now, I do have another design for an aperture, but that may not make it into the original new box design. It may be a little bit further down. And the reason is timing, production, and money. You know, it, uh, the other design that I've got is a uh, cool design, but it takes quite a bit more uh, finagling and fiddling and, and design work, really, in order to make it fit within this kind of a device. But uh, I'm excited about that. So there's a little little preview, kind of like a little, little, you know, teaser for you. But currently we're using an aperture stick, and this is important because the stick is going to provide the aperture for the device, which means that it's got detents and that it can fit in, but it also means that we've got the ability to very easily bring about different aperture sticks for different desired photography types. And let's talk about that. Want a pinhole? We can offer a die cut pinhole made out of steel or brass or something that can be used to take really great pinhole images and you want something for portraiture and photography, for, for some bokeh and background blur, we can do that as well. In fact, some of the images I'm going to show you actually were used at a very large aperture for the box camera. And let me explain to you how that works. There's no focus on a camera such as this. There's no focus. So when developing for this camera, Thinking about things like hyperfocal distance, near and far limits, where our circles of confusion are, so that we can get reasonably acceptable focus on that six by nine centimeter negative in the back is very important. So the original stick that I'm using right now has a total of three apertures on the stick and that allows us to go from F22, F16, and F8, skipping F11, okay? Now, when we when we do this that means that your focal length changes completely currently uh, well maybe not your focal length your depth of field changes completely with all that so generally speaking the f22 is going to give us everything in focus basically about six to eight feet in front of us 
uh, all the way out to infinity, roughly 44 feet at this millimeter opening with our with our focal length 95 millimeters there and this size opening, we can get a nice long depth of field. Uh, and then when we move over to here to, like I said, F8, this is F8 right here. And that's awesome because that means that this camera we can use in F8, which on medium format is a lot wider than you might think. It's a lot more shallow depth of field. That moves our in-focus plane with this camera right around uh, 6 feet to 8 feet and everything else between right after 10 feet, 12 feet. Uh, and when we hit 14 feet, everything falls off our hyperfocal distance isn't even approached. And that means that we actually are able to get some interesting shallow depth of field with this camera. But in order to get that, you have to know a couple of things. You have to know what your measurements between your near focus and your far limit focus for your acceptable focus is. And then you have to understand where your hyperfocal distance is. And then that's going to tell you where things are going to be properly set off. So, or, or where the, the actual um, the depth of field will begin to fall off. And that also means that we need in order to be able to express a shallow depth of field with this camera, we need to have quite a bit of distance in the background to our subject, and that's important. And remembering that this 95 millimeter lens that we're using on a 35 millimeter equivalent is giving us like a 55 to 57. Let's actually talk about some small images, okay? I don't know why I said small images. Sometimes it's hard to go on forwards. I'm gonna post these over on Instagram over the next coming days. Let me just slide over so that you can see right here. Uh, here we've got just a regular street shot. We're walking around here. We're at the F22, really nice. We're at one two hundredth of a second, which means that um, uh, the shutter speed I've, is right around one two hundredth, one one seventy fifth. I, I, it's, I don't have a machine to test it, but from actually observing the shutter, film testing it, and then also recording it in high speed slow-mo so that I can, I can see, I can get that we're right around 1, 1 75th, 1 200th of a second, which is where we want to be. Uh, the problem currently is that, that with that tension, my shutter dials break easy. So that means after about a roll of film, the shutter, the rotary shutter breaks because of the abruptness of the way that it works, which means that I'm redesigning it right now. So currently with these images, these are all taken with one shutter. Afterwards, I replace the shutter. That's not something that I'm going to bring to market like that. I'm just sharing with you what I'm overcoming right now in order to bring you these images. And even that is a really great step. This is a beautiful image. There's quite a bit of clarity throughout the entire image. Uh, it looks real nice. Of course, you're looking at this on the Surface Pro 4 so that you can see it while I'm displaying it. This is the actual entirety of the image. Very little light fall off. And once again, the reason is quite simple. I'm using a 23 and a half millimeter wide in diameter front element. That element, that's the lens. That's huge. It's much bigger than we would need so that we're able to do two things. Minimize vignetting quite a bit and also minimize distortion. And I can go into a lot of that later. But for those of you that don't know, we're basically just using the center part of the lens. It's an optical grade multi-coated lens that is able to bring us this kind of an image. Very excited about that. Let's see, is this the right direction? Here's an image. This is out of, out of place. Um, and remember, I'm metering all this stuff. I just saw a guy down at the beach, but you can see what happened. This is when I knew that my shutter had, had kind of broken, and at least it... it it stayed in the open position. I saw a guy kicking something on the beach. There it is. You can actually see some dark banding right here. Um, this was a little bit closer to nighttime. In the, uh, we were getting quite a bit darker. Uh, we can actually see a little bit of that movement. This is another reason I figure we're about one two hundredth of a second. We're able to capture this. The ball's moving very much faster than him. You know, of course, the guy goes and he kicks. He kind of his body kind of spins a little bit right there. Um, I just kind of snapped this shot because I saw them playing down at the beach. Uh, I thought it was nice, but you can also see some shutter issue right here because that rotary shutter twists and it has kind of an arc to it. And um, that arc, you can kind of see that curvature right there. I just think this is an interesting photo. Definitely one that helps me diagnose some problems with it. Uh, continuing on right here, here's a picture of my boy. Now, this is one where I've, I've done exactly what we talked about. So I used F8. I knew that I needed to be about seven feet away. I used a tape measure to my son right at about seven feet, and I put him in front of a long grove of trees so that he's way far behind me, and we are way out there, and so we were able to get some interesting bokeh. The difference is you can see that this is um, uh, really, really wide. In fact, actually, this one... 
This one may have actually been f4. The natural aperture of the lens is a 2.4 and it's widest uh, right around there. And uh, the stick that I have, I've got a couple different ones made. I think this one was actually f, like I said, like a f4. And in this case, um, yeah, and that's the one I was quite a bit closer. I was like six feet, five feet in front of him. Um, I got my notes, but anyways, we're able to really compress the background. But notice as we do so, uh, there's a little bit of a haze to it, which is kind of interesting. I like it, but it's just definitely something that's there. Guys, this is coming out of a box camera. This is an excellent initial result for a box camera. These are, are, are pre-release model images, you know? So this is, uh, this is really exciting for me. Of course, this is in black and white, developed here at the house, um, kind of pushed in, in, and a little bit of editing in Lightroom. Although I tried not to do anything other than just correct some of my development like water stains and stuff like that and bring out just a little bit of clarity uh, so that we could see the image a little bit better. But still, how awesome is that? Um, this is the one. Yeah, so this one was really crazy. Um, here we were at nighttime, okay? And so in order to get this one, <laughs> it was really funny. Um, it, we're getting darker. Sun is almost setting. Um, we're using, like I said, that uh, I think we're st still, I think we're actually in the same grove. Um, similar with Ira, and uh, just kind of poking around the corner. But I've actually got my car lights pointed on him so that we can get this effect. So he's kind of rim lighted, and you can actually see. Uh, so nighttime isn't really the right answer. It's more like dusk, just a little bit after golden hour. But my car lights are pointed directly to his side, giving him some rim lighting. And then I'm about six feet, eight feet in front of him, something like that, taking the photo. And um, I used a little app in order to tell me what I what I needed uh, the um, the photo exposure app, the one that I like to to share with everybody. And that one just uh, told me that we were um, uh, we needed a lot of bright light, so we turned the beams on on the car. We then turned the high beams up in order to get uh, this area to it about an EV of 13, where two uh, one two hundredth one seventy fifth of a one one seventy fifth of a second would actually expose that properly. And anyways, I like how it turned out. Looks pretty nice. Continuing on along right there. Oh, Ed, and you can tell, you can tell right here um, that this is taken in the same part just before everything was going down. It took me like 25 to 30 minutes to set up each shot. So I got this one, and then when I went, began to set up that one right there, uh, you know, the light had fallen an awful lot. But even here, you can see um, we're getting some really nice depth of field here uh, because we have a window right around F8 that's going to be about seven feet wide, somewhere in there, six, seven feet wide, where it's kind of acceptable. And we're about 110 feet or 100 feet in front of that background, so that kind of begins to blow out just a little bit. You can even see some of the blurry um, uh, as the grass is right there, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of grainy, uh, but um, I like that. I don't know if that was my developing this time or whatnot, but uh, it looks good. And then as we continue on along, this is much brighter. Look at this really bright daylight. So nice bright daylight, nice image, a little bit of dust spots and things on there from where I was uh, processing. And those are some birds in the sky, so um, right there. But this is at F F22. You can see all of that um, really nice right there. Just kind of one of those types of images. And I think that's it. So um, is it? Nope. And then we got another one. So we're down there at the waterfront and we're just taking pictures on uh, Butte Street I think this is and yeah so street photography right out of the bag ready to go this is a little bit darker of an area same one though you, you can kind of see some of the characteristic vignetting that's coming around there I think it's nice though right uh, it's not too much there's not a lot of distortion there's there's a little bit of distortion in the corners but not really that much it's really pretty good um, if anything we're losing we're talking about softness in the corners so that's pretty cool right there and um, so there we go. Uh, and I really like this one. I just thought it was pretty neat altogether, this old building. Um, and so once again, F22 right there. And uh, the, the biggest thing is not being able to change, choose a shutter speed. And I wasn't really using any filters or anything. I was just trying to find areas that worked. And the bright sunlight shooting with the 22 aperture on the stick uh, was a lot easier because it was just point and shoot frame up in the, uh, in the actual viewfinder. However, when the light started to get down, um, you can kind of see some of that graininess come out because there's not enough light and kind of push it a little bit in Lightroom in order to bring out the image some. And you can kind of see that in, in some of these darker images that we're talking about right there. But overall, I think an absolutely gorgeous aesthetic. I'm very pleased with these images as far as the very first uh, photos that I've got to bring for you guys. This is really cool and makes for a very exciting time for me because this puts us right on the cusp 
of our Kickstarter launch. Uh, and let me talk to you a little bit about that. The, the design team, George, is over there working on boxes right now. Uh, we're fin finalizing the website. Actually, the website's running. I just haven't made it public yet. Uh, we're going to add some of this, and we're going to continue on along. So lots of fun, guys. I hope that you are excited, just like I am. I'm Rob with Robert Hand Photography. Today, we've been talking about the uh, beautiful box camera. This is the Vintage Brown, <laughs> which is pretty nice. If you didn't know, we got the Vintage Brown, and then we've also got uh, the Weathered Blue. And uh, that, how cool is that? These two both look really nice, and uh, people like it. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and end this and say thank you for watching. I want to catch you on the flip side.